Hi everyone, um, it's Nikki here and I just wanted to talk to you today about energy because it's one of the biggest problems we get as we get older is feeling tired all the time or TAT as we call it in clinic because it's T-A-T-T, uh, -T, tired all the time because it's the number one complaint of uh, most women over 40 uh, even though most of them actually aren't coming in for that because we kind of just accept it as part of getting older or, or because we're all so busy that we're going to feel tired all the time. Um, but it is not just because everyone else is, everyone's tired. Uh, it just doesn't mean it's, it's normal and it's right. It is a sign that the body is struggling uh, with whatever it is, whether that's, you know, it's, it's stress or your busy life or, or something underlying. So I wanted to just go through some of the main factors to look for. Uh, when you're tired because it's not something you have to put up with uh, and there are lots of things you can do diet and lifestyle to give you give you more energy so um, of course number one factor is getting enough sleep and that's the obvious one because if you know that you haven't had enough sleep then um, you're going to be pretty grumpy and tired the next day and that has this sort of cumulative effect as well you don't get your lost sleep back so Number one thing is to improve your sleep if that's the reason you're feeling tired. Now, there are lots of other reasons too. And for women over 40, it can be down to your hormones, surprise, surprise, which is why I talk about energy a lot. Now, uh, I talk about the feisty four hormones, your cortisol, thyroid, insulin, and estrogen, and they all have an impact on your energy levels. So the first one is stress and cortisol. Now, um, we all have stressful lives and it's really difficult to manage it. Um, but when cortisol is out of balance, it can really drain your energy. Uh, it has an impact on your blood sugar, which can give you the energy dips, so which may be why you're having that mid-afternoon slump or that early morning wake up. That's cortisol uh, waking you up, kicking in and messing with your blood sugar. Um, it really has an impact on your metabolism too because it can suppress your thyroid hormones and they're responsible for keeping your metabolism going and that's your energy source. Um, so if you have a, a stressful uh, situation going on, then um, you know your cortisol can do that as well. And that, it's just going to sap your energy. Don't forget that uh, I, uh, this isn't about stress in particular, this, this um, talk, but... Um, Cortisol uh, has um, such an impact on all your other the all your other hormones that it's it's it has a whole um, subject of its own. So I'm sure I'll be talking about that very soon. Um, the second one to be wary of is thyroid. Now, <clears throat> your thyroid, as I said, is responsible for your metabolism. So it's like the switch on that thermostat. So it'll either switch you up if you've got too much thyroid, or switch you down if you've got too little. And when uh, the most common one, obviously, is the, is the down switch, where we feel we haven't got enough thyroid hormones as we get older. And as, as I mentioned, stress has an impact on that as well. And um, if you don't have enough thyroid ho hormones or active thyroid hormones, then obviously your metabolism is going to be slower. Your energy production is going to slow down and you're going to pre feel pretty exhausted and foggy. And the thing with um, thyroid is it affects every single cell in the body. So you can feel sluggish in any aspect, so you, your brain can feel foggy and slow, um, your system can slow down and sort of really get stuck and give you constipation, things like that, or um, indigestion. And uh, it's, it, it, can, it can cause um, just general fatigue uh, and also weight gain because your metabolism is slowing down. Sugar, stimulants, things like that can give put you on the blood sugar roller coaster, give you huge highs of sugar, a sugar rush, and then you get those horrible. And it's those energy dips on that roller coaster that can make you feel really lethargic and sluggish. And low blood sugar um, at night can wake you up, you know, that three or four o'clock in the morning thing, and really make you feel tired and grumpy the next day as well. Lastly, oestrogen and progesterone, your, your perimenopausal fluctuating hormones. Um, and they're, you know, they can really uh, mess you about in your perimenopausal years. And don't forget, perimenopause can start around 35, so don't think you're too young for that. Um, and that can, those fluctuations can leave you quite tired as well. And if you're waking up at night with hot sweats, night sweats, uh, and you're low in progesterone, your sleep quality can be really affected too. So 
those are sort of the main hormonal influences on your energy levels. Um, but there's other things as well that, that can cause fatigue. It's, it's such a multifactorial thing. You need to kind of rule out some other things too. One of the common ones is like toxins. So if you're exposed to a lot of chemicals, they can damage your mitochondria. Now your mitochondria are like little tiny little batteries in every one of your cells. And they're the things that make your energy. So they can be easily damaged by chemicals. So you've got to be very careful what's in your environment um, and avoiding particularly, you know, the harsh cleaning uh, chemicals and anything you're putting on your skin because they're going to go straight into your bloodstream. Uh, I've got a whole video on toxins and chemicals to come, so watch out for that one. The next one to look out for is nutrient deficiencies. We, we all need essential nutrients to make energy in our little mitochondria. So we've got um, B vitamins, very important, she B12, B6, uh, we need magnesium, we need zinc, we need a whole host of other nutrients. So if we're lacking one of those, then uh, we may not be able to produce the energy that we need. So, and that can be a simple uh, eating foods rich in those particular nutrients or getting a really good multivitamin supplement in. The next thing that can affect your energy levels is your gut. So gut health is a big one. I've done videos on this before. If you have any digestive issues, constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, that kind of stuff, reflux or pain, you may have an underlying gut infection or, or a food sensitivity or an imbalance in your gut flora. And that can be a huge stress on the body and it can really put an increased demand on your energy. So um, it's definitely one to look out for and also um, you know, the big the big culprits are things like the big food sensitivities are gluten and dairy, and soy, that kind of thing. So it might be worth to doing a, an elimination diet to see if any of those foods are affecting your energy, or if it's something more serious and underlying, then um, talk to us about looking into the doing some kind of digestive investigation. And then. Um, the other thing that can really obviously be a sign of uh, fatigue can be a sign of is any kind of other underlying health condition. So it's really important to get checked out. Um, fatigue can be a real uh, sign that sometimes the body is struggling with something a bit more serious. So please see your GP if you're worried about your fatigue or just to just to get checked out. So there are a lot of things that you can do naturally to help boost your energy levels. So I'm going to go through a few of them. I've just written this blog actually. I'm just kind of basing this on my blog so if you wanted all of this written down it's on happyhormonesforlife.com slash blog so the first thing to do is breathe i know this sounds pretty obvious we're all breathing aren't we but um even if you don't have a lot of time during your day everyone has 10 minutes everyone i don't care what you're doing uh even if you have to get up that 10 minutes earlier because you can, you can do 10 minutes of deep belly breathing, and that's when you're breathing in and pushing the belly out and holding it, really deep breaths, holding it, and then breathing out again so that your tummy goes in. Because when we're stressed, we shallow breathe through the chest, and we, we breathe short, shallow breaths. It's like what I'm doing now, because I'm on video. <laughs> um, and we, you know, when we start to breathe deeply through the belly, it switches on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite of our stress response. It's the system that we need to rest and repair. And switching off that stress response is the key bit there because that allows your cortisol to rebalance and it gives your whole system a bit of a breather. Pardon the pun. The second thing I would recommend is having a, the right breakfast. Because when you start your day with a carb-heavy breakfast, like cereals or toast, or lots of fruit and on, there, on its own, then, um, or fruit yogurt or something like that with sugar in it, then you can, um, or orange juice, fruit juice, smoothies, fruit smoothies are a classic one to, ra to raise your blood sugar. Then you're on a big blood sugar spike. And when you're on a blood sugar spike first thing in the day, it's really hard to get off that roller coaster because you're going to come down. So you, you go up, you're going to come down and have that energy slump, that low blood sugar a few hours later. And when you're, you start your day on that, energy, on that blood sugar roller coaster, it's really hard to get off. And then it can go through the night as well and wake you up at three in the morning. So best breakfast to have is some kind of protein stroke, healthy fat breakfast. So eggs, natural yogurt, oats, gluten-free oats if you have a sensitivity, um, nuts, um, seeds, that kind of thing. They're all going to help 
you fill up and stabilize your blood sugar so you're not having that huge surge and then this huge dip and they should keep you because if you have protein and fat they don't have such an insulin a uh, blood sugar uh, reaction so keeps your insulin down keeps your blood sugar stable keeps your energy levels going and your mood because um, energy mood and weight all follow blood sugar people so if you get if your blood sugar is stable all of those things should should um, stabilize and make you feel better third thing is to try some coconut oil now coconut oil has a been had a bit of a bad rap recently but that's because it's it is saturated fat and everyone's saying well you know don't eat saturated fat well we know now that saturated fat is not the villain that it has been portrayed to be and particularly coconut oil it's a different type of saturated fat it's not the normal saturated fat it's made up of medium chain triglycerides which are metabolized very differently in the body um, and they go straight to the liver and they make energy so it's a very good boost to your metabolism and it doesn't um, make you fat at all in fact it boosts your metabolism so it increases your fat burning so and it's it's been studied and recent studies have shown that it is really helpful for weight loss so you know fat can make you thin <laughs> Especially coconut oil and these medium chain triglycerides. So I cook with coconut oil and um, sometimes I pop a little teaspoon in my smoothie or in my coffee in the morning. If you've heard of bulletproof coffee, it's a bit of a thing to get going in the morning. Um, and um, yeah, and it's an energy boost. So great, use it. Fourth thing to do is to really look at your exposure to toxins because as I said these can damage your little mitochondria and um, they're all around us so we've got to be really careful and I will do a separate video on this but um, just filter your water for a start, tap water, we don't really know what's in it but I don't want to take that chance, I'd rather filter it. Uh, we know that there are certain things in there that we don't want in there, heavy metals and things like that. Depending on where you live will depend on what your water is, what, what your water's like but I would always um, filter mine just to make sure. Eating organic as much as possible because the pesticides we know they do disrupt your hormones so um, and they are toxic and they will damage your little mitochondria if you're vulnerable to that so uh, eating organic where possible especially where you don't eat the, where you're eating the skins of things like berries and apples and um, all the vegetable salads and salad leaves and things like that. Um, switching your cleaning and your laundry products to something a bit more natural because these are very harsh chemicals that they put in there and you know you can smell them straight away cleaning products you know, very very um, fragrant and they're all synthetic fragrances which are now known to disrupt your hormones and and damage your mitochondria so like brands like Ecoeva and uh, BioD and Green Sense are all really lovely brands that use natural fragrances um, more and, and a lot less chemicals. So that's laundry and cleaning. Um, and just get rid of fake smells wherever you can because these contain chemicals that, that are quite toxic to the body. So we're looking at things like scented candles and air fresheners. Um, uh, as I said, I will do a video on all this stuff because it is a bit mind-blowing, but it is very easy to, to switch to natural brands these days. There are lovely websites. BigGreenSmile.com is one of my favourite um, that do all kinds of natural alternatives to our everyday products. And lastly, eating energy-producing nutrients. So we want to be eating foods that are rich in B vitamins, magnesium, iron, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. These are all required for energy production so and, and often we know we, we are quite deficient in some of these especially magnesium and zinc um, and sometimes iron if you're still menstruating you, you might be low in iron and these these vitamins and nutrients can all be found in vegetables fruit nuts seeds beans lentils fish and meat so it's kind of like a bit of a paleo theme going on there um, and I'd also advise you if you are still um, pre-menopausal and you're having regular cycles to get your iron levels tested at your doctor it's a really easy test to do and they're very usually very um, happy to do that for you and you're, you're looking for a ferritin test because that's your stored iron um, and you know because if you're low in iron you're, you're, you're going to be exhausted yeah so it's easy one to rule out because you may need to supplement especially if you're a vegetarian and you don't get a lot of iron in your diet because it's really, mostly the absorbable iron is from meat and animal products um, 
that's it. I don't know if you guys got any questions, but I'm happy to answer them underneath. Just pop them in the comments and um, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.